Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Michael Brenholt, and in today's video, I want to show you how to add color to a model that's been loaded into the GrabCAD Print software program. But before we begin, please take a moment to click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay, let's get started. The first thing to do is to actually select an object you would like to add the color to. In this case, we'll pick this piece here, and when I click on it, you'll notice that it highlights it in blue. Upon doing that, come up here to the right hand side and select the icon for model settings. When that opens up, it's going to open a window of several options and we will go through them individually. The first one loaded is the tray materials and it is just that. These are the materials that are loaded individually in your specific system. So if we were to come over here and select the cyan, for example, it will apply the cyan to that part. Now note, if I come down to this model and I try to click on this boss or click on this wall, I can't highlight either one of them to change the material or color properties. Why is that? Well, if I were to come up here to the left hand side and select the project panel icon, when I open it up, I can notice that the page cover B is an individual file. Individual files can only be one color or one material property. However, if we come up and click on the assembly, we can notice that the brain gear is a series of files. And if we come out to the object, we can select each one of them and therefore change the color or mechanical properties for each piece. Selecting on the frame, we'll come over here and if we again wanted to just stay with something individual off of the tray, we could click on the black, for example, and change it to black. However, if we wanted to be more specific or more advanced, if you will, the next option down is the color picker. Now, in picking the color picker option, we could be as arbitrary as just simply saying, oh, I like this color red here. Okay, upon doing that, it will show me the hex or the RGB number assigned to that. If I like that option, come up here and click on the favorites so you can remember it for later should you ever want to repeat using that specific color again. If we were to choose another option, say the blue, and then add that to our favorites. Again, we can easily swap back and forth between things that we will then want to reuse. Making a note to the RGB, just in quick clarification, RGB is an additive color process. Additive color processes are used for TV monitors, computers, uh, your phone, for example. And as an additive process, it's different from what you are actually going to print in the case of these parts. Printing is a CMYK process, which is a subtractive color process. And because those processes are different, you will notice down here there is a selected and actual option. The selected is indicating what you might be seeing on your screen as opposed to what you will actually create because the two color processes form colors differently. Coming back to the RGB, if you didn't want to arbitrarily select a color, you could come in and say, well, for example, I want to do the Go Engineer Green. And we can then come in and add the numbers that I know for Go Engineer Green, and it will change the frame to that color. So you could be arbitrary, you could be specific. Either way, the color picker gives you more opportunities to choose color than just what you have in the tray materials. The next option down are the digital materials. Now in the digital materials selection, I don't normally use digital materials if I'm trying to specifically just change a color. Case in point, if I were to select the magenta and the cyan, it only gives me a limited range, nothing near what you'll see in the color picker. What I really use the digital material option for is if I were to come up and add the agilus, for example. The agilus then allows me to change the mechanical properties of the part as well as adding color to the piece. Why is this important? Let's say we wanted to have something that had a blue hint to it, but we needed it to be more flexible. If, for example, we wanted to select the frame and say, I really want you to be a sure A50 value, but also be blue, we could do that in here. So noticing as you highlight over them, each one of these values change, but you can also change the color property. That is the biggest reason why I will use the digital materials. Going forward from the digital materials, you have the CMYK input. 
Again, kind of like the Go Engineer Green, if you know specifically what a color format number is, you could come in and say, well, I want this to be 50. And the next option will make it 15. And the next option will make it 15. The next option will go 10. And the last one for T will make that one a 10 to make it an even 100. Apply that. Boom. Just that fast. If I know the CMYK inputs, I can add that information in to create a specific color. And then finally, you have the Pantone. Same principle, if I know what the Pantone number is, let's just use our year, for example, that this video was created, 2022. Let's choose the 2022C. I can change it to a very specific Pantone color option if I have that information at hand. So going forward, using this dropdown, whether it's the tray materials, the colors loaded in the machine, the color picker, I want to be very advanced with what I want to choose. Digital materials, I'd like to change mechanical properties, or the CMYK and Pantone for very specific options I would like to enter. You have a wide range of choices of how you can add color to a model that's loaded into your program. So there you have it. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us at GoEngineer.com, and thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today.